The game starts off with a tutorial boss, like all other games. But, I mean, I guess for a few stages. They give you your instructions, and then they let you go. A tutorial boss is usually a great opportunity to boost the confidence of a player, but as you heard, I said usually. Because the first few stages are like any other tutorial boss, but at a certain point the game says, okay, you had your fun, now die. The boss goes from a tutorial boss to first boss in an instant, which is painful to a starting player. I give this boss 5 Michaels out of 10. This is a boss I don't really have much to say about. The idea that she was someone kept prisoner just to keep someone else prisoner is pretty cool, but gameplay wise, there isn't really much happening here. Aside from the change from mid range to melee halfway through the fight, the boss is fairly forgettable. I give this boss 3 Michaels out of 10. As you can see, the game is a very unique art style. While it does look nice when they're standing still, the animations are choppy and not nice visually sometimes. While I do like the weird feature design of the characters, because I mean, we are, here we have Sword Man, uh, Rabbit Dad, and of course Old Man. Old Man is where the game goes from baby mode to fuck you mode. On my first playthrough, I was stuck on him for hours. He forces you to learn to counter instead of dodge, which is a good habit to pick up. A lot of his phases consist of him pulling up pillars that you have to destroy. The problem is that when you hit them, they come right back, which means you have to dodge your own shots, which sounds harder than it actually is. I give this boss 6 Michaels out of 10. This is the most forgettable boss. That's not an opinion, that's a fact. He's just Superman. He's not even a cool one. He has one cool attack where he leaves lines on the stage and looks flashy and constricts the area. His final attack is also cool and an epileptic person's nightmare. However, his melee attacks are easy to predict and dodge, so he posed almost no threat in my first playthrough. I gave this boss 4 Michaels out of 10. I've spent the entire time talking about the bosses, but there are other parts as well. In between bosses, there are walking segments through the environment where you can learn about the boss you're about to fight and talk to your rabbit hype man. Oh yeah, the rabbit guy. As you play, he continuously prepares you and hypes you up for the next fight as well as sharing his backstory, which I quite frankly didn't care. Now we're getting to the good bosses. The hand is a knight with a shield that deflects projectiles and a sword that can shoot lasers for some unexplained reason. But the real best part of this boss is the melee stage. In Fury, the bosses have a lot of phases. And in each of them, there's a range stage and a melee stage. The fight climax is in a relentless barrage of slashes where you have to parry them all in a row. And as a bonus, you get to scar a child for life by killing his father in front of him, so that's fun. I give this boss 7 Michaels out of 10. The song pretty much marks up the halfway point. She's an angel of some sort and only has range attacks for the most part. She just flies around and shoots at you for the entire fight, and, but at least the background's pretty. I like her shtick of trying to make you give up by offering you a better life instead of everyone else's plan of beating the shit out of you, but the actual fight's kind of underwhelming. I give this boss 4 Michaels out of 10. Okay, to start off, fuck this fight. I hate it. She spends 10 minutes running away from you while she shoots an insta-kill sniper while you have to kill drones and dodge the drone shots. After you get past the cancer part, it's more just reacting to her invisible attacks and watching cool animation. Her stage is sick, but she also makes me want to die, so I give this fight 5 out of 10 Michaels. Alright, time for the big boy. This fight is one of my favorites of all time. It's fast paced, counter based, and all around a good time. It's a mainly only fight against this world's best sword fighter right by the ocean. You fight on a dock which makes this fight's atmosphere feel like something out of Samurai Champloo. And as it progresses, his attacks deal more and more damage. Like by the end he's holding an oar and can shoot fire at you. He's technically the final boss and for reasons I'll get into in a bit. I give this boss 10 out of 10 Michaels. Okay, so this boss is strange, and it's the only one where I really care about the story. She was a kid who they put up there because she wanted to help save the world, even though she was vastly unprepared. So as you fight her, which is extremely easy and was supposed to be, she gets more and more desperate. Finally, as you knock her down, you stab your sword through her chest and she says her final words. Please, hold my hand. Shit, dude. I just feel like a dickhead. Come on, man. For story reasons, I give this boss 6 Michaels out of 10. Fury's fast-paced action and music are obviously the best parts. The game really peaked at the edge and sadly wasn't really close to that quality at any other point in the game. 
Thankfully, the game is only like two hours long and the pace is extremely fast, so it keeps you enthralled the entire time. Each fight has at least something good in it, and they're unique from each other all the time. I would give Fury a 7 out of 10.